I think the starting point we're going to have on this video is, um, well, as you can see, I've created myself a to-do list so I can try to keep myself on track a little bit better. We've got um, updates to some flow functions. Um, there were two of them specifically uh, identified in the marketplace, and I'll show you what that looks like. Um, but they were the base64 encoding and the um, get item from storage that were updated. And whenever you have those in, as we go over to AppGyver, whenever you have flow functions within the uh, your app, you will see the red circles with the number of updates show up uh, in the marketplace search entry fields. Now, the reason we're in a different app here is I had started a video for the to-do list where I did the updates to those, and then uh, I screwed up that video. So it's deleted and gone, so I'm showing you what it looks like here. And then we'll switch back over to the to-do app. So what you'll see is when you go into the marketplace and go to the updates with that, you'll see that any of the items that are newer than what you have in your individual app will be available for update. And when you click on them and install the update, then that will be the new version. And you can look down here in the full release notes and get an idea whether or not uh, you have to worry too much about it. This one is added web support. We'll still want to test, but um, in theory, that's not going to impact us because we're doing mobile app. Let me go back in here, go back into the updates and look at pick files. Um, this one fixed a bug. So we'd want to test that to make sure that everything worked fine for us still. Um, so that's what you would see and how you would do those upgrades. It's just a normal install. Um, so we're going to switch out of this app now and go back to our to-do list. There we go. <clears throat> so for us, the items that were changed were the base64 encoding, and then the other item, like I mentioned, was the um, get item from local storage. And those, uh, the get item from local storage was actually a fix that we want to address. And so that's in our login screen because the login screen, when that page loads, if you remember, we go through the process on page mounted to get item from storage. <clears throat> And had I not screwed up the original video where I did the update, you would have seen that there were only two output nodes on the original uh, flow function. And the update that they did created a third node. And the purpose of those are, um, the first node is still for, I found the auth token in our case item and um, the value of it comes back. Now the second one, is true or false whether the item was found or not. So they separated out not finding a token in local storage from what is now the third node, which is an error. So your mobile app can now manage an error separate from just not finding the item, uh, which to me makes a lot of sense and that's helpful. Uh, what I also did is I put another hide spinner here because I did not have that in our original efforts and took both the I can't find it second node and the I have an error third node and tied those into hide spinner. There's really no reason to notify the user of these problems. We really just wanna take them to the login screen and let them log in. So that's what's set up here and how we adjusted for the change from two output nodes to three. Okay, so that's the change related to that. So that would be the, there are two functions, the base64, that was just an update and it worked. The item, get item from storage, I just showed you what that looks like. So in essence, we are done with these. And we're going to move on to the next list, which is, I think it would be good to, the homework I left you with in the last video was to um, get back the profile image path during login. I had done it during the auth me API call, which is I'm already logged in, my auth token is stored in the app. Let me uh, show you where we're at on here as well. But if the auth token is uh, successfully loaded, the auth me will just automatically load you in, um, but it does receive user information back 
and one of those items is the uh, profile image. What I didn't do in the last video was do the same changes for the login. So currently, if I were to log in, let's see how effectively I can do this so you know why I'm changing things. Okay, so currently, this did an off me, automatically logged me in, and I get the profile image. If I sign out, I wonder if I have, okay, so if I sign out and then I sign back in, give me a second to type this in here, see if I can, okay, probably all of the right letters, type in the password, okay, let me make sure that I type in the right password, there we go. Okay, so now when I go to profile picture, you'll see that I don't have a profile picture. <clears throat> and so that's what we're looking to fix here is to load the profile image path when you do a manual login as opposed to the automated login. So to do that, and let me work off my notes here. I'm trying to be good about following a pattern so that I don't lose people in the video. Uh, so left this as homework. We're going to go ahead and do it here. We're gonna update the Xano API for login to include the profile image. So we need to, in Xano, for the login in the to-do app, we need to make sure that after we got the user, that we also get the profile image. And so let's go ahead and see what it is we get back currently by running debug. It's always a good reminder to see what data you have before you start changing things. Okay, so when we run this, so currently, if I scroll, so I see I'm passing in email and password, which you just saw. We're getting the user record, checking the password. If the password fails, we bail out. If not, we create an authentication token and return that back. We set it to a variable of auth token and then it's in the response. Okay, so let me switch over here real quick because make some updates. Not that you wanna see me, but uh, there I am. <clears throat> So what we've got going here is returning the auth token, but I also want to return the user information that is the profile. So let's go into or sort of the profile image. So here's my debugger of the API call I just did. Uh, you can see I'm returning user, uh, but I'm not returning the details of the image. And so I, I want to flesh out this media ID so that we have that data as well. So I'm gonna go into where I get the record and we're gonna do an add-on because I'm getting the user table info but not the media path info. So we already have an add-on that we've used before. Uh, that's probably the add-on that we used with the off me when we created that. And so I'm going to leave everything as it is there. It's already got the uh, information assigned or how it's gonna match up. And it's gonna come back as underscore profile underscore pick, which is what we used before. Okay, so we'll get all of this information back. So let's go ahead and rerun um, what we have here. Because I wanna see that I'm getting that data. And then once I know that I'm getting it, we can put it into the response. And that will get it to our mobile app and app guyver. Okay, it's not here obviously, because I still just have an auth token response. I'm gonna go over to debugger, and I'm gonna look at what was returned off of the get record that is user. And you'll see now that we have the underscore profile underscore pick. And when I expand that out, there is the image section that was in there, and within that is the path. And actually, this is a good time to mention, uh, the Xano folks 
put in a nice update just uh, a couple days ago that um, gives you the full URL. So they still leave the path like we had before. So it's not a breaking change that they made. Um, the prior code that we had that concatenated the base URL to the relative path still works. But what we're gonna do going forward is use the full URL and avoid having the um, logic in place that is no longer necessary. So the URL we wanna pass back as a profile path. Okay, so what I want to do is, let's see what we can do with just adding a variable. I wanna see how much I wanna add in here. Let's say we add in all of the user. And so now we have auth token, which was there before. And we have a new section, which is user. And if I run that back in AppGyver for login, let's see what that looks like for a change to our response schema. Okay, so I'm in the login data resource in AppGyver, and I am going to go into the login test. We still have the same details to type in here for the input. And when I save this and run it, <clears throat> okay, so this is what we get back. So by leaving off token as its own high level, that should avoid any breaking of what we already have in the way of logic in AppGyver, because we expect it to be at this high level. But I'm gonna save this schema. And then what we've got is a user level. And we'll have to dig down a little deep. I could probably clean it up, but just for the sake of simplicity, um, I'm gonna pass back all the data, which is gonna be user profile pick image. And from that, we'll pick up the URL. So let's go ahead and save that. And then I'm gonna go back to our login screen. And not on, this one still works, should still work and we'll confirm that. But I'm gonna go to login. And let's see here, so for login, I now want to, when I've created the record, I now have more information coming back. So I set the app variable, let me get off of outputs and go back to properties. This should all stay the same where I set bearer space and the output from the create record for response auth token. But now I wanna go one step further and where I currently have the set app variable for the profile pick, you remember a time ago, we just used the default grayscale one that we saw. And what I want to do is output value of another node from the create record. Um, once again, we'll see if we're incompatible, but if we, here's the new schema. And I'm gonna go all the way down to URL and pick that and save it. And so what I should see happen at this point if I switch back over, I've lost my app for the moment, so let me bring that back to us. I'm gonna mirror again, so it'll take just a few seconds for it to mirror my device on the screen. There we go. <clears throat> so we're gonna go back in, and we're gonna show uh, that on login, right now this will work because we already logged in, but I'm gonna sign out and we are gonna log back in to see if now when we manually log in, we get the uh, profile pic showing up where it didn't before. So this is an example of, you know, whenever you put in enhancements, there's a good chance there's two or three layers that you have to make the fixes to. Um, and it's always good to remember to test all of those. Okay, there it is. Okay, so what we did was um, we updated a couple of our uh, flow functions, which were done up here. And then we went ahead and 
made it on login, which I had left as homework last time and decided since I had to make the change, I just as well do a video with it. That's what it looks like to make that change, which is pretty straightforward. I mean, there's obviously a few ways you could make the change. You could decide to um, send just the profile pic URL instead of the whole user data element like we did, but there's a chance we'll need that data, plus it was a little quicker to do. So that's what we're gonna do for this video. As you can see, my to-do list here uh, for each of these sections, I think where we're gonna head next time is away from sign-in and profile pictures and logouts and all that kind of stuff and focus a little bit more on the to-do app functionality itself. I've kind of let that um, sit for longer than I'd like. So we're gonna create in the next video, I think a new to-do functionality section. Um, and there's uh, a good video from Mevi. Um, I don't know if you've been out to the AppGyver forum, but she's got some good, U or it's not the forum, the AppGyver YouTube channel. She's got some uh, great videos on how to do specific stuff. And one of those that we're going to borrow from is the ability to have a floating button in the bottom right that, let me do it on the right page. No, nope, that's not what I wanted. A floating button on the bottom right down here, as you see in many mobile apps, that allows us to do a new to-do. So um, that will be the next video. I'm looking forward to that, and we'll focus on some to-do functionality.